Howdy, I'm Elmo Lee. Welcome back to my channel. You're probably wondering why this episode is presented in English. Well, if you have watched all my videos from the beginning, you would have noticed I actually started my channel in English. But since I feature mostly Chinese food, I thought presenting in Cantonese would be more appropriate. Initially, things were pretty good. Even the English educated audience were happily watching my videos thanks to the English subtitles. Unfortunately, of late, the viewership was getting from bad to worse. Perhaps watching one episode per week was too exhausting for you. Or maybe you're just bored with the same format. That's why I'm trying to make it a little more appealing for you, like changing the language for one. Granted, there's no hard and fast rules. Let's say I'm just a little desperate now. Please leave a comment and tell me if you are comfortable watching it in English or otherwise. Basically, I'm a gadget man. New technologies and products interest me. That's why I watch a lot of unboxing videos on YouTube. Perhaps I should jump on the bandwagon and do a video unboxing my Puro Dua Activa X. Whilst I can't say this is an in-depth review of the car, but this is what I can share with you after waiting six months for it. For starters, there are three variants, Activa X, Activa H, and Activa AV. The price ranges from 61000 to 71000 Activa basically is an adaptation of the Daihatsu Rocky launched in Japan in 2019. It basically has the same three-cylinder engine as the one-liter Axia, but with added turbocharge and dual CVT. This Activa is rated at 98 PS with 140 Nm of torque between 2004 and 4000 RPM. Since my wife was the one paying for the car, I chose the cheapest variant in order not to burden her. Basically, this Activa X is sharing the same engine with the two other more expensive models. It has the important ASA incorporating the Autonomous Emergency Braking System and the Lane Departure Warning. Of course, a lot of frills are missing, like the Adaptive Cruise Control, Adaptive Driving Beam, DRV, Parking Camera, Blind Spot Warning System, LED Infotainment, and Digital Dashboard, etc. Also, for a few K less, you will not get a fog lamp, leather seats, no, the 17-inch tires. I have driven three-cylinder cars before since I bought the Kalisa in Canary for my family 20 years ago. Three-cylinder cars are mostly made for fuel efficiency. Although Perodua claims that the Activa can give you 18.9 km per litre, but I was only getting 12.1 km per litre, which is not bad, considering it's a turbocharged car. Though they claim the new 3-cylinder engine is smoother, but I can still feel the engine vibration. However, when compared with my old Kalisa and Canary, it's slightly better. What really annoys me is the screaming engine roar and the wind noise I get when I accelerate. Also affecting me is the rubber band effect I get from the CVT engine. But for most part, I can't complain since I get a turbocharged car for only 61k. Today, I'm here at Perodua Glamoury for my first service. Instead of waiting here, I decided to go to Restaurant Cuisine Noodle House for lunch. You do know, I featured them a couple of times before. They're probably the most reliable kopitiam in Glamoury. They never fail to surprise me with new dishes each time I'm here. Today, I was introduced to the self-made Wu Tsaiko, Cha Siu Pao, Walnut Cookies, and the Kai Si Ho Fan, which is only available on weekends. What can I say? Everything they serve is fantastic. Let's get to the core subject, PJ O Town. You probably know I've featured it many times before, but in bits and pieces, not on the whole. PJ O Town was once known as Effingham Estate, built by the British to deal with the overpopulation of KL. This was in 1952 when the roads were not tarred with wooden houses lined the street. At that time, only 800 houses were built and sold to the residents with a 60-year lease home. In 1954, Asunta School was set up here, followed by 
PJ's First North Hospital and Cinema respectively. In the 60s and 70s, this was the happening place to be. A lot of government servants and Malay elites lived here, including some famous politicians too. Not to mention some of the best food which are found here. One of the oldest surviving restaurants, Hinki Bakute, which was opened in 1973. Of course, who could forget PJ's first Medanselera and the ever popular Sundi Kopitiam. For this episode, I'm again inviting my buddy Danny to help me identify some of the old gems of PJ Section 1, better known as PJ Old Town. I hope this compilation won't disappoint you. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, share it, and consider subscribing if you haven't done so. Thank you. Now in no particular order, allow me to showcase the better tasting food of PJ Old Town. Now that the Majestic Theatre is demolished, I come to Old Town Less. However, I still come to Jalan Osman to pick up my Chinese herbs. When I'm here, I make it a point to grab some food at Sundi Kopi Tiam. Because the land lease has expired, this Kopi Tiam is relocated to Jalan One Stroke 12, which is just a stone's throw away. Although a little cramped, but most of the vendors are still here especially my favorite Kui Diao Teng. People claim that this is the best Kui Diao Teng in PJ, and I fully agree. Meet the second generation owner Mr. Yi, who took over from his father, who started the business some 50 years ago. The best thing about this Kui Diao Teng is, it is still the same as 50 years ago. The robust umami tasting bro, and the generous toppings. The next best food store in this Gopi Tiam is Cha Kui Tiao. All the patrons here would remember seeing an elderly uncle donning a cowboy hat frying his Kui Tiao. This was probably the saddest news I heard. According to the vendors, he passed away a few days ago and today is his funeral. With no intention to feature the new Cha Kui Tiao, I recall that's a Yong Tao Fu store that's worth highlighting. Unlike the average Hakka Yong Tao Fu, their fried items are stuffed with shives or Kao Choi. Madam Lee started this Yong Tao Fu store more than 10 years ago, relying heavily on the foreign workers. After tasting the fried items, I felt the fish umami taste was missing. Thankfully, they have got good bites. We are now at new Old Town restaurant at Jalan 2 Stroke 32. Strangely enough, this is actually three Kopi Tiams housed in one premises. I was even told that the food must be served within the respective Kopi Tiams where you order them. I was attracted to the wonton mee because of the skill this uncle was proudly displaying. Meet Mr. Chan. He and his wife have been running the business for 20 years. He told me they used to make their own noodles but stopped since they lack manpower. Even though the wonton mee is their main fare, but the curry variants seems to be the favorite among the regulars. We tried both the wet and the dry curry versions and found the latter more appealing. Good noodle texture mixed to perfection. Within the same premises is Lee Wong Ki Kopi Tiap. As we were walking in, a fan recognized me and encouraged me to feature Lee Wong Ki's meat roast. He added, although the noodle dishes they serve are good, but in his opinion, the meat roasts are the finest in town. I managed to catch the owner Mr. Lee in the kitchen preparing the meat roast. No wonder the products are so good, with his personal touch. Mr. Lee only started this business 8 years ago, but he was already helping the father run a food store 20 years ago. I asked the owner what are his best items. He said the roasted duck is the most popular item. Unfortunately, oh, wow. his supplier ran out of ducks. Upon tasting the food, I found everything fantastic, although I was most impressed with the char siu and the siu yolk. We now head to the oldest Medan Selera in the whole of PJ. 
In the 70s and 80s, there are only two food courts in PJ that you will patronize. One in Old Town, the other in Section 14. Even though there are many options available today, you can't deny there are still some jams here. The first outlet is Winky Ice Kacang, which was established in 1962. Meet Peggy Chu, who is the second generation owner. Apparently, she is now grooming her son to take over as the third generation. I asked Peggy why they have lasted so long. She said it's all about consistency. She confidently said if you tasted their ABC 60 years ago, you will still find the same taste today. She was absolutely right. The ABC was still remarkable, including the original chendol served in a glass. Just next to the ABC store is this very versatile number 45. Meet the prolific owner Jenny Su, a local resident who actually studied in Asunta School. I was very impressed with her because she offered Asam Laksa, Taofu Baka, Popia, Rojak and Sotong Kangkong all by herself. Did you know, in the event, if she decides to hire an extra hand, the staff must be a local since the authorities forbids foreigners working in this maiden celera. Basically, all the Yonya items offered here are my favorites, so it was difficult to make a choice. Jenny then recommended the Roja and Sotong Kangkong, since these are her popular items too. I was quite pleased with the recommendation, but the Kangkong Sotong really blew me away. The tangy sauce was the most unique I ever tasted in Kangkong Sotong. The third store we are featuring is Sate. Each time when I think of having Sate, I would take a drive to Kajang. But if I want to have pork Sate, I would either head to Serumbang or PJ Old Town. Incidentally, chicken Sate is most popular with the Chinese since 65% of the Malaysian Chinese don't consume beef. Of course, they would love to have pork Sate. Unfortunately, they are hard to come by. Thankfully, Gerai Sate China Tu Yun. It's here. Meet Mrs. Lo, who has been helping her husband run the sate joint for 40 years. She proudly claimed that the sate uses the choicest meat. The sate sauce is made with quality peanut, and even the sate sticks are imported from Taiwan. Her sate were fantastic, but I personally preferred the mutton sate most. Most people would agree that Henki offers the best bakute in Old Town. When I went to Fiji there more than a year ago, I was very impressed with their bakute but felt they were a little commercialized. Apparently, this Tian Tian Lai bakute is often considered a substitute since they are available in the day whereas Henki only opens in the evening. Meet the owner Mr. Yong who hails from Jianjiarum. He has been running this store since 1985. I asked him, since you live around Klang, your bakute recipe must be adapted from there. He said not completely, because he made modifications to it along the way. Upon tasting the soup, I found it more flavorful than henki, with more pronounced robust umami taste. I'm a big fan of Sangha Noodle. I used to frequent this joint at Life Center which offered this delicacy. Over the years, this dish has gotten to be rather expensive. Some restaurants can charge you as high as 350 ringgit, just like the one I had in Damansara Kim a few months ago. So can you imagine how delighted I was when I saw that Loiki was offering Sangha Noodle at only 55 ringgit? Meet the owner Mr. Chia who has been running this business for 20 years. Basically, this is a siu chow joint offering noodles and side dishes. Mr. Chia is so lucky to have a very capable wife who does all the cooking. They pride themselves to use the freshest ingredients. He was right. This was probably the best Sangha noodle I ever had. Definitely better than the one I had in Damansara Kim. If you have seen all my old videos, 
you would have noticed I've already featured KK in my best Siu Yok Rice and number 50 Karimi in my best 8 Karimi respectively. They obviously deserve to be featured in this episode too. But since I'm rushing for time, I would just mention them in passing. Although I featured Seung Ki in my best at Yong Tau Fu, but I'm still featuring them, only this time on Hakka Delicacies. Apparently, this store was started by the owner Yvonne's mother 50 years ago. Now her husband helps out in cooking, whilst her sister and son takes the orders. Although Hakka Yong Tau Fu is their main fare, but throughout the years, been Hakka people themselves, they added many Hakka delicacies like abacus seed, cha yuk, pork trotter vinegar, etc. I must say, these dishes are probably the most authentic Hakka dishes I ever had. The next time you come to Seong Ki, don't just order Yong Tau Fu. Go for the Hakka delicacies too. We are featuring the last establishment of Old Town Medan Selera, Cavita Banana Leaf. In case you didn't notice, the food court is divided into halal and non-halal section. In the halal section, Cavita is so big, they occupy all units of stall space. Meet the second generation owner, Mr. Jaya. His father Krishnan started the business in 1974. They are probably the most comprehensive banana leaf joint I have seen. All the Indian dishes you can think of, including Indian cookies, are sold here. One customer was telling me that their masala tea is the finest in town. Even though I was so attracted to their hidangan, but I can't enjoy the food now since I was too full. Instead, I had to tapao. It was obviously a joy to have Kavita banana leaf even at home. We are back at Jalan Tustruk 32 to feature Hammer's Kitchen at Restaurant Hongki. We were here earlier at 11 a.m. but was told that their signature Wabo curry won't be ready till 12.30 noon. This is a regular Indian outlet that offers tose and an assortment of curry dishes but with a twist. They serve the Wabo in curry, rendang and waterfowl style. They used to serve the Wabo nasi lemak in the morning but stop, cause they were short-handed. Meet the owner Mr. Vijay who followed his father's footstep to be in the food business. His wife Hema, who hails from Batang Berchuntai, is responsible for the delicious food here. Unfortunately, we arrived at 2.30 p.m. The wild ball dishes were all sold out. Thankfully, the owner treated us to the mutton for wild, which is the second best item in the menu. We are on to the second stall of this Kopi Tiam, which happens to be our last feature for the day. If you live around Old Town, you would have probably patronized a Pan Min store operating in a Kopi Tiam located right opposite Kamsin Tim Sum. Apparently, this Pan Min store has been running for 20 years, up until the new owner of the Kopi Tiam increased the rental. Thankfully, this Pan Min store has moved to Restaurant Hongki six years ago. Meet the owner Madam Lok, who in her younger days will make all the noodles manually. Even though the noodles are outsourced today, she makes it up by perfecting her soup and the toppings. I wanted to order the dried Pan Min, but the owner said to enjoy true Pan Min, go for the soup version. She was right, this Pan Min was packed with umami taste. Fantastic! 